Dzień dobry, witam Państwa bardzo serdecznie. I would like to welcome all of you. Dzień dobry, dzień dobry, witam. Good afternoon. Warm welcome to everyone. Channel 2, this is English canal, uh, channel 3, Ukrainian and channel 18. This is Polish. Which English on the channel 3 is language Ukrainian and on the channel 18 is the language Polish. Dzień dobry. Good afternoon uh, once again uh, Mr. President, uh, Mr. President, uh, Prime Minister, uh, MEPs, uh, uh, dear chairman, I would like to welcome everyone to this conference. Uh, my name is Michał Niewiadomski. I'm a journalist of the Polish radio and I represent the Polish-Ukrainian uh, club of journalists and along with the uh, agency of uh, national project investment projects as well as with the uh, uh, Polish-Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce. We are co-organizers of this conference. Uh, this conference uh, is divided into two parts. Uh, uh, during the first session, we will be talking about the challenges that are ahead of Ukraine, and during the second panel, which is uh, uh, which will be chaired by MEP Zalewski as well as Euroactive, uh, during the second panel, we'll be discussing the perspectives beyond Vilnius. So, uh, the floor uh, over to you. What can we expect? I would like to welcome everyone. I'm very happy that President Kwasniewski is with us because his role in the accession process uh, is very important. Uh, his role is uh, paramount. Uh, he played a very important role when he was president and also today on behalf of the Pol of the European Parliament. And this day is very important uh, in terms of the uh, accession uh, of the uh, association process. Uh, uh, and uh, I will not uh, welcome everyone individually. Uh, we uh, work in this parliament, we represent different uh, political uh, groups, uh, uh, and we are very much concerned with this issue. And I see a lot of MEPs in the room, and I'm very happy about this. During the second panel, we will be uh, talking about Vilnius, of course, uh, on the assumption that Vilnius will be a success story. We will be uh, talking about the agreement, uh, what, this, what the benefits will be. We'll be talking about the experiences of the countries uh, that are already member states uh, of the European Union, Lithuania, Poland, uh, and uh, Romania. These are the countries that have uh, good experience. And we will be uh, discussing uh, in detail what uh, this will mean to build this uh, common economic area from uh, uh, Lisbon to Minsk. So this panel, the second panel, will uh, start at uh, 4 p.m. And you mentioned the Vilnius uh, summit. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, this, uh, I would like to pick up on this uh, uh, Vilnius uh, summit issue because this association agreement that will be discussed by the uh, ministers of foreign affairs of the EU this is like a foundation, like a basis. This is like uh, climbing uh, K2, a mountain, uh, 8,000 meters above the sea level. Uh, then we have to have some kind of base at the level of 5,000 uh, meters. And then we have uh, uh, 3,000 meters more of difficult climbing. And this is this last bit. This is this very last ascent uh, uh, from the moment of signing the association agreement uh, all the way to the summit, uh, i.e. Uh, um, accession. And we would like to talk about uh, Poland, uh, because uh, for 11 years uh, uh, since we uh, signed uh, our association agreement all the way to 2004, and uh, tomorrow uh, we will also uh, talk about what happened uh, following accession, uh, billions of euro that uh, was injected into the Polish economy. We'll talk about this, and these changes are visible. We have new investments, we have new motorways in Poland, but I would also like to uh, mention those who were threatening us, menacing us with the European Union. Uh, there were those who said that we would lose our identity, we would lose our independence. Uh, a lot of uh, people 
uh, talk that uh, farmers will be great losers, but uh, quite to the contrary, Polish farmers are the largest beneficiaries of the enlargement of the European Union. Uh, Poland for centuries have been supporting its neighbors uh, uh, from the Jagiellonian dynasty uh, and uh, 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 from uh, the times of Józef Piłsudski all uh, uh, the way uh, uh, to the period following the Second World War when Mr. Gedroyc said that without uh, free Lithuania, free Belarus, free Ukraine, Ukraine there is no free uh, Poland. And uh, uh, all presidents of the free uh, independent Poland uh, followed suit, uh, Mr. Wałęsa, Mr. Kwaśniewski, uh, and Lech Kaczynski, uh, they uh, were implementing these uh, words into practice and our President Komorowski is also implementing this principle. I would like to thank all MEPs, all those who uh, have been supporting us. I would like to thank Mr. Zalewski, Mr. Olejniczak, I would like to thank Mr. Koval uh, and uh, Mr. Kalinowski. When uh, six months ago we were organizing the gas uh, conference in Warsaw, uh, then uh, Mr. Kwaśniewski said that uh, 2013 will be a year similar to 91 when Ukraine declared its independence. Uh, Mr. President, uh, uh, we will see whether 2013 is equally important, whether this will be uh, as important as 91. So I'm giving the floor to you. Thank you very much. I would like to welcome all of you. Uh, and I am very happy that this conference is being held uh, in this uh, chamber in the European Parliament. Uh, and I would like to uh, apologize in advance. Uh, I will have to leave you earlier because uh, this is a very important day because uh, when it comes to our mission, uh, 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 our mission will be presenting its next uh, report uh, during the meeting of the Conference of uh, Presidents. Uh, and at 6, we are meeting with the President of the European Parliament, Mr. Schulz. Uh, so I would like to open this uh, conference and I would like to uh, share a few thoughts uh, with you. Uh, uh, I have no doubts whatsoever that uh, we are on the eve of a historic moment and this uh, comparison to the referendum that goes back to 91 is very much essential. Back then uh, it was a great surprise. Ukraine during the referendum there was a very large turnout uh, at the level of 90 percent. Uh, during this referendum more than 90 percent of Ukrainians, those who participated in the ref referendum, they were uh, in favor of uh, independence. There were different uh, justifications, different visions of this freedom, but we can uh, surely say uh, uh, tw more than 20 years later that Ukraine is again proving its strength as an independence country and Ukraine has shown that the Ukrainian identity is a fact is a fact which is deeply uh, rooted. Uh, this is deeply rooted also in those places where we thought that uh, the Ukrainian tradition, Ukrainian history is weaker. And uh, by this I mean the eastern part of the country. I am certain that signing the association and FTA agreements in November, by the end of November in Vilnius, uh, this will be another breakthrough a moment uh, in the relations because this will be a kind of strategic guideline for uh, the Ukrainian uh, politics for next uh, decades and uh, this, po this uh, policy should uh, tie uh, 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 closer uh, Ukraine with uh, the European Union. Uh, with uh, the European Union, which is a group of countries who share the same values, who are helping each other and who respect uh, the principles of uh, the European solidarity, which is the most important value. And I do believe uh, deeply that uh, the signing of the association agreement uh, is very important and uh, this uh, and that also uh, the European Union is aware uh, of uh, the significance of this event uh, and I'm pretty sure that this is the case because I have had so many meetings with the Ukrainians and I think that most Ukrainians really wish this agreement. Uh, most Ukrainians uh, see their vision in this way, the vision for their uh, children, for their next generation. And I'm talking about different circles uh, uh, and uh, uh, these are not only the young people from the Western Ukraine who are in favor of the association, association agreement. There are also uh, business 
people, representatives of Ukrainian culture. A lot of Ukrainians from different walks of life, uh, they see this association agreement as the future vision for their country. But uh, Will it uh, happen? Uh, will it come true? I do believe that it will be the case. There is uh, still a few obstacles, a few hurdles uh, that we have to overcome. As you know, a dozen or so months ago, the European Union uh, established three criteria that have to be met. Uh, so these are the reforms of the judiciary, uh, the reform of the electoral law, as well as the issue of the uh, selective uh, justice. And uh, by this, I mean the solving of the uh, question of uh, uh, Ms. Timoshenko. And we've been dealing with this issue along with my colleague, Mr. Cox. Uh, we've been to Ukraine on a number of occasions. We have held uh, a number of talks, and we can see that there is uh, progress. There is progress when it comes to the reform of the judiciary. There is new uh, laws, new uh, legisla le legislation acts uh, that uh, refer to the most important uh, areas of judiciary. For example, the new uh, civil uh, procedure code, uh, the new uh, uh, bill on uh, uh, attorneys on prosecutors, and we can see that uh, Ukraine is uh, willing to introduce uh, changes into their electoral law based on the recommendations of uh, international organizations uh, that voiced their comments uh, following the elections from last year. And there is uh, yet another prob problem uh, to be solved. The issue of uh, uh, Madame uh, Timoshenko will be talking about this uh, issue uh, today. I do hope that uh, 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 the Ukrainian authorities will uh, uh, show uh, comprehension for uh, our demands. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to solve this uh, uh, problem uh, so that uh, uh, Madame Timoshenko can be uh, treated. She needs a medical operation. This operation should take place as, as soon as possible. So hope, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to find a, a solution which is legal in order to solve this very important uh, problem. Ukraine uh, has decided to associate itself with the European Union. This is very important for the future of Ukraine. And this, this conference will be about this, what this, uh, what this means to Ukrainians, not only from the political point of view, but also from the point of view of everyday life, uh, uh, from the point of view of their citizenship. Uh, uh, of survival of their families. And I think that uh, voices from those countries that joined the EU uh, recently, Romania, Lithuania, Poland, uh, those countries uh, who were uh, uh, who made, uh, uh, who were a part of the Warsaw Pact, and these countries who are independent, but who are also the members of the European Union, their experiences uh, can be very much uh, telling, and their experience is evidence of the fact that uh, we can do this together, and we can uh, overcome these uh, problems together. I am certain that the signing of the association agreement, as well as the, uh, as well as uh, free trade agreement, uh, I think that uh, this will help uh, uh, Ukraine consumers. This will, this will help uh, Ukrainian economy. Ukrainians will be able to purchase uh, goods uh, at uh, more competitive prices. Uh, there will be less administrative burden, less, uh, less red tape. Uh, and I do think that association for Ukrainians will mean more law, more legality, more rule of law. Uh, more decent uh, judiciary, and I am convinced that this choice, uh, this European choice, uh, will also mean that Ukrainians will be able to benefit from our, uh, from our European heritage, for example, access to universities, uh, ability to move freely, to run uh, businesses, to engage in economic uh, activities uh, in this very large family, which is composed of 28 member states. I do uh, appreciate what Ukraine, Ukraine has done. It is a great risk. Uh, we, uh, and it was very much visible uh, uh, last summer when uh, the Russian Federation blocked uh, the imports from uh, Ukraine. And there were different justifications, uh, uh, phytosanitary issues, uh, bureaucratic issues. In this uh, battle, which is being held. We have to appreciate uh, the Ukrainian authorities. We have to appreciate uh, what uh, Ukra Ukrainians do, uh, both those in power and those in opposition. Uh, uh, they are, uh, they are uh, 
trying to uh, make progress despite uh, what is happening in the East, what, is, what Russia is doing. Uh, and they have done a lot uh, in order for this signing to be possible, because this is not only agreement. Uh, there is uh, hundreds of uh, legal acts uh, which are covered by the association agreement and the free trade agreement. I do hope that in Vilnius we will be celebrating, along with our, with our Ukrainian colleagues, we will be celebrating uh, the association agreement, uh, and I uh, do hope that we'll be able to uh, set some uh, visions for the future. And two comments. Uh, uh, and there is one question that uh, arises very often. This is a question raised very often by those who uh, suffer from a kind of European integration fatigue, and their question is, why do we need Ukraine? And my uh, answer is as follows. The European project uh, is the uh, uh, most successful or the best uh, projects uh, ever, the best projects uh, uh, that were uh, implemented by the human civilizations uh, uh, in hundreds of years, uh, nations who were waging wars against each other, thanks to this project, these nations can build not only the common market, but we're building a union of societies. And for the last 70 years uh, the Europe, in Europe, we have had peace, we have had open borders, uh, and we can say proudly uh, as Europeans that uh, we have uh, also uh, done a lot when it comes to reconciliation. We have done a great job when it comes to reconcile those countries who are waging war against each other uh, 70 years ago. Uh, so today, thanks to enlargement, uh, Europe uh, covers more than 500 million uh, citizens. We have 28 member states. Uh, we have also countries uh, who uh, were uh, waging uh, wars uh, 20 years ago, for example, in the Balkans. Uh, and this Europe uh, has uh, uh, great opportunities if we are integrated, if we are united, uh, uh, if we will be thinking in terms of our national interests, but we have to be able to reconcile these national interests with the common European interest. Uh, if we are not selfish, uh, uh, if we are uh, not closed uh, uh, in our, under our uh, national uh, policies. Uh, so Europe uh, has the opportunity, if it's uh, deeper integrated, if it's better integrated, and if it's larger, Europe has to be open, has to be open to those who want to become a part of this family. Then this Europe would uh, be uh, an uh, even uh, a more important uh, player in this global theater. We know that the greatest powers, the greatest European powers, do not uh, count for much if they act alone. And Ukraine, for this open Europe, for integrated Europe, uh, Ukraine is a very important, is a, is a great uh, partner. This is a partner with uh, deep European roots. Ukraine is a partner which has uh, a very important uh, uh, geopolitical situation. Ukraine has 50 million uh, people who are uh, well-educated, uh, very dynamic, young people as well. And we need these young people in Europe more than ever. Ukraine is a large uh, market which uh, brings a lot of opportunities for uh, common projects, for European investments. We have to cooperate uh, and hopefully all this will result in the further development of Ukraine and the whole European Union. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, uh, we should forget about this enlargement uh, fatigue. Uh, we have to. Uh, we see that this road is uh, difficult uh, uh, and long, but we have to be hopeful, and we have to uh, continue on its on this uh, path. Uh, and we have to invite Ukraine uh, to associate itself with the European Union. And maybe in the future, Ukraine will become a full-fledged member of the European Union. And very last comment, uh, the signing of this association agreement or, or signing of uh, FTA is not the end of the process. Uh, far from that, this is just a good start uh, for this process. And then there will be many years of efforts. This will uh, mean the implementation of all those uh, documents covered by the the association agreement and we'll have to work on new solutions. I am convinced uh, that this is a very important uh, tool for the modernization of Ukraine. This will be a great opportunity to get rid of all those uh, post-Soviet, uh, uh, of this post-Soviet backlog, uh, which is, uh, you know, which is uh, deep, deeply rooted, more deeply rooted than Poland, which uh, has never been a republic of the Soviet
Soviet Union. So this implementation will call for a lot of effort, and I would like to appeal to you uh, to make this effort. I remember when I first met with, with Mr. Gonzalez, uh, the Prime Minister of Spain, who said uh, uh, that uh, very, something very important. He said that this homework for uh, future members is uh, difficult. Uh, he knows that, but uh, the more homework you do before accession, uh, uh, m the more benefits uh, you will get from uh, structural funds, uh, from the membership, uh, uh, from different uh, methods of uh, support that uh, the European Union offers. So I do appeal to everyone to do this homework uh, following the Vilnius summit. Uh, we should uh, continue uh, on its uh, path, uh, and Ukraine should, uh, carry, should continue to carry out uh, these uh, reforms, because this will create the basis for the civil society, uh, which uh, will uh, create more rule of law and more predictability. And apart from this homework, uh, one very last comment. Uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, the fact that Poland has been successful uh, is due to the fact uh, that uh, uh, we uh, managed to, to uh, create a large political consensus uh, for this Polish road. Uh, we, have, we had the unity in Poland uh, from the left to the right, and thanks uh, uh, to this uh, pro-European alliance, uh, we were in a way protected from sudden changes in our politics, because in these uh, uh, key elements, uh, for example, European policy, there was this uh, continuity. Uh, I know that we have uh, uh, deep uh, uh, divisions in the Ukrainian uh, politics. We know that the dialogue between the opposition and the government is very difficult. I do appeal to the, uh, to the Ukrainians to build this uh, pro-European alliance. You have to build this uh, front, this pro-European front, uh, which will bring you uh, closer to the European integration. But this requires uh, a constant, open dialogue with all uh, the powers, with uh, also those who uh, are against, uh, who are against the uh, against accession. Uh, for example, the Communist Party in Ukraine. However, those uh, political groups who are in favor of the European perspective, uh, they should go beyond their prejudices. They should try to build something which will be a common. European alliance, a compromise, compromise above uh, political divisions, uh, which will bring Ukraine closer uh, to uh, uh, the association agreement uh, now, uh, and uh, then uh, it should uh, uh, be easier for Ukraine uh, to uh, prepare itself uh, to the full membership uh, in terms of uh, carrying out reforms in education, in, in, in economy, uh, this will uh, help Ukraine to uh, get closer. This would be a beautiful day uh, in Vilnius if we manage to sign this association, association agreement. There is uh, still a few obstacles to be uh, overcome, and I would like to uh, ask Mr. Uh, Prime Minister uh, 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 we should uh, we should uh, avail ourselves of this uh, opportunity and uh, solve uh, these outstanding issues uh, and hopefully uh, uh, in Vilnius we'll be able to sign the agreement uh, and then we'll have a lot of work to do following Vilnius because uh, the free Ukraine is necessary not only for its neighbors but modern uh, free Ukraine, uh, Ukraine integrated with Europe can be beneficial for Ukraine itself and for all Europeans. Thank you very much Mr. President. Thank you Mr. President. I will remind our guests. Uh, Mr. Protoshevich, the Vice President of the European Parliament, the Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine, Konstantin Grishenko, Mr. Vladislav Kaskiv, President of the State Agency for Investment and National Projects of Ukraine, Mr. Richard Florek, Founder and CEO of FACRO Company, uh, as well as the EMPs, Mr. Pavel Koval, as well as Mr. Konrad Szymanski. The discussion will be moderated by Oleksandr Shushko, the Research Director of the Institute for Euro-Atlantic Cooperation. Sasha, I give the floor to you. Moderate in English, as probably this is a very international audience, and uh, you may choose uh, electronic interpretation if you need, uh, please. So uh, my role here is as a representative of uh, the civil society, 
just to it is there is no space for my own speeches so just briefly to introduce myself as I'm not just a researcher in European politics in my country but I'm also a chairman of Ukrainian national platform at the civil society forum of Eastern partnership which is a really multinational regional platform for civil society which is designed in order to give our society voice in the policy of Eastern Partnership. And uh, that's why I, I'm representing not only myself and my NGO, but also the community of more than two, 200 uh, Ukrainian civil society organizations, which are members and participants of the National Civil Society platform of the Eastern Partnership Forum. So uh, here it is a big pleasure to me to be here and to moderate this panel with six distinguished panelists who have their own projection, who have their own experience, and I hope you will be enjoyed to, to, to listen to their opinion on the matter of this conference. And the first floor I would like to invite Jacek Protasevich, uh, Vice President of the European Parliament. Uh, and the, the, the question to Mr. Vice President would be, what is the main expectation of uh, Ukraine being associate partner of the European Union? What do you expect the added value which Ukraine can bring to the EU? And on the other hand, the European Union can be more uh, maybe empower, empowered by the contribution of Ukraine to the, to the common family matters of Europe. So please, Vice President, the floor is yours. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's the house that I am. I'm, uh, I'm used to be to, to, to chair, but I have forgotten to, to, to switch on the, the, the microphone. So, uh, once again, thank you very much for inviting me to take part in the, the conference. Thank you very much for the questions, um, uh, Mr. Chair, and. Uh, I have told that you might be a little bit confused because I was advised by, by uh, Mr. Niewiadomski to use Polish language. That's why I have, uh, uh, I, have, uh, I have made my notes in Polish. That's why allow me to switch to Polish and I will allow you to, 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 to switch your interpretation also into a Polish channel. Um, pytanie... So for the question as the added value of the Ukraine associated with the EU in the certain point in my previous comments uh, have been mentioned uh, by Mr. Kwasniewski, Mr. President Kwasniewski. I will try to put it in order in very short uh, relay in such short three blocks. As we um, take a look uh, from the political and economic point of view, as a perspective of the European Parliament, um, though the block of the, or the first plan of the stable uh, neighborhood, uh, which is necessary for any country, any international organization, in this case every union uh, is very important for, uh, is to have a stable and a safe borders, a uh, stable and safe developing uh, neighborhood. Nothing worse can happen to Europe than to have the neighborhood which is destabilized and uh, the neighborhood which is economically non-developed. Uh, the consequence of such a state of matter is what we are uh, observing on the, um, in the south of Europe. Uh, so all the constant conflicts in which we need to engage whether we want or not even military, which is always very, very expensive, politically and financially as well. Um, how, and also in the other aspect, which is the, the loss of the human lives, uh, it is the migration pressure, pressure on the EU borders. Um, and that is what we would like to really prevent. Um, we have no doubt uh, that the Ukraine associated to the EU um, becomes the key element of the stabilization uh, of our eastern neighborhood. I will not say the partnership for the moment. Um, the second word 
uh, the association of Ukraine to EU as the well neighborhood uh, what Mr. Kosniewski mentioned is the strengthening of the independence and the sovereignty of our mm, biggest neighbor are and in the east and the third word um association uh, signing the agreement is also the um the export uh, of the EU to the Ukraine uh, to the Ukrainian market the acceptance of this uh, agreement and implementation uh, means that 75% of our legal uh, good in the certain period of time should have its uh, word in the Ukrainian law as well which means uh, we see the processes it means better and more transparent dem democracy so the the uh, voting law uh, the reform of judicial judicial law um, the reform of institutions of procu uh, of prosecutors uh, which is in the east european post soviet if we may say uh, tradition had completely different outcome and different role than in the liberal democracy countries this transformation was very useful also from the point of uh, the rightfulness uh, and freedoms, uh, social freedoms on Ukraine, in, the, in Ukraine. And then the battle law, uh, which we do not really need to command, uh, the more successful law, uh, law uh, counter with counter-corruption as well, which means a better climate for the investments, for the economical investment on Ukraine, in Ukraine. Uh, then I could go to the second area, which is the possibility of the opportunity of economical uh, cooperation between the companies, the firms, uh, the European firms, the EU firms, and the partners uh, from the Ukrainian market, uh, which uh, I have no doubt that the, the market is, of course, on the condition if it's safe uh, and is... Uh, Playing according correct uh, judicial uh, playground, uh, it becomes a very attractive market for the economic expansion. Um, we know this very well from Poland. Uh, I will not overdo here if we can say that the value of of the, the Ukrainian market now is um, can be compared to the. Polish uh, value of the Polish market at the very beginning of our association with EU and not coming into the numbers because we are we have economists for that I would like to remind you about one very important um, president of Jacques Chirac during a debate on the constitutional uh, treaty uh, a very very warm debate very hard debate uh, saying uh, a counter argument that the, uh, uh, the, 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 the expansion of the Union uh, caused the migration. No, there are much more uh, places of, of, for jobs uh, became, we, we, we created then, uh, than it was before. So it was the common uh, mutual uh, interest for, for uh, both uh, Ukraine as well as, as foreign uh, EU uh, trade. Um, we have no doubt that we need in Ukraine to have a stable partner uh, c regarding the uh, ener uh, energy safety as well, and it will be guaranteed by the association agreement. This is what Mr. President Krzyzewski said. It can be the worst, the, the, the worst of the things, the, the most difficult, because it is very important, it's crucial, because the association uh, of the Ukraine to the European Union has its consequence in the geopolitical uh, sense. Uh, first, uh, if EU has got ambition, and it has really, uh, to become not only the economic but political uh, global player, uh, it must be uh, it must be uh, successful. And if it's the Eastern Partnership without the association agreement, um, this will not be this will not be very uh, successful and the lack of this agreement can be also the bad sign for 
other uh, countries uh, entered uh, invited into into taking part into this i'm convinced that um, contrary to uh, the voices from the kreml uh, kremlin uh, it will not uh, it will not uh, defy the, the the position of ukraine according to relations with the F russian federation contrary it will strengthen its position um then it also cre it will also create a new paradigm to uh, the russian european uh, standards in the geopolitical uh, partnership we need a partnership uh, with the relations of the Rus with the russian federation uh, which we do not really have uh, all the time so i think the uh, ukraine associated um, will introduce the, the partnership element to the Federation, to the Russian Federation uh, and its neighbors as well. I th think also we can um, think about the new quality of the relations between the, 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 the Russian Federation and Polish, uh, Polish conditions. That's uh, uh, really, uh, I would like just to announce one more time that we have three equally available working languages for this panel. So every speaker, it's up to you to choose either Ukrainian or Polish or English. So uh, uh, that's, uh, uh, sorry for not uh, starting from that point. But now I would like to give a floor to Konstantin Grishenko, who is now the Deputy Prime Minister of Ukraine, but before he was for twice a uh, foreign minister dealing directly with the negotiations on association agreement, and he knows a lot about the substance, about the costs of this negotiation process, about the, the challenges which Ukraine will probably face will, when it one day starts implementation of association agreement. So, uh, Deputy Mar uh, Prime Minister, the question to you is, which uh, kind of balance between uh, benefits and challenges you see now on the eve of signing association agreement and how Ukraine would deal with this complex of challenges which are both international and domestic? Uh, and uh, what's your expectation on this matter, please? Well, thank you. I will try to speak English. Not that I dislike my own language. I am not very eloquent in Polish. Still, uh, when we are in the European Union, we'll address the issue because it's an official language and so many people do speak Polish in Ukraine. So for them it will be easier, if needed, to speak Polish here. But let me simply first start with expressing gratitude to the organizers of this event, both on the Polish side and the Ukrainian side. I think for the agency responsible for national projects, that is a very important project indeed. Helping to bring European future to Ukraine is an essential project, a national one, for both the government and the nation alike. I will not dwell on the importance and the benefits of the association agreement. I think that President Kwasniewski and uh, Vice President uh, Protasevich were very eloquent about that. I don't wish to be repetitive here. Let me simply stress a couple of points which are, I believe, important at this particular juncture. First, we are bringing to the association agreement not simply a part of Ukraine. A large numbers of those who live in the western part of Ukraine, civil society, the more educated people have always been for the European integration and have seen their future squarely in Europe. But for many who are less informed, more aligned to the neighbors to the east, it has always been a major challenge to accept that they will have, as they believe still many, to severe these ties. I would like to stress one thing. In our political landscape, the only 
<coughs> the only factor, the most important one, that would allow to bring the whole of Ukraine to Europe fully, conscientiously, is the leadership of President Yanukovych, who has strong followership in the East, who understands what are the reasons for European integration and why it is important for Ukraine as a state and as a nation in general. And obviously he places his authority at stake to make sure that the support will be in the whole country to the process as such. We don't wish to be partly in Europe, partly somewhere else. We need to be as a whole where our future lies. Second, and that is extremely important as well, we now have, if not consensus, then the large alliance of both the governmental fractions in Parliament, but also of opposition working together where before they were unable to agree on anything or almost anything. That is a very important consolidating factor for the future of Ukraine. If we will be able to disagree on the issues which are of political nature, but essentially of internal political nature, but create the same kind of a, a large uh, consensus on the foreign, or let's say European agenda, then we will be successful. The first step is already evident. Third point, there is uh, a whole set of legislative acts which need to be adopted in the 45 days left before Vilnius. We are working very hard as a government with both parliamentarians from the pro-governmental party of regions, but also, which by the way, not everyone fully shares the views that the government and the president believes are important for the future of Ukraine, but there is party discipline. And if you are a member of political force, you need to follow discipline, but also with the opposition. There are differences of opinions on particulars of specific bills, legislative drafts, but we believe and that is the thrust of the message that the government gives to the parliament overall. We need to do it in time, on time, efficiently, and in accordance with the expectations of our European partners. And it is being done. I don't want to enumerate so many legislative acts. I can, I do have it in my papers, but believe me, we have done, in a very short period of time, more than has been done in the last 10 years or so. Not because we didn't wish to do it before. Simply the consensus was created under the prodding of the President only recently. And as soon as it was formed, we started to move expeditiously. There, were, there is good ground for that because everyone is aware of the importance, and also they were exposed to the debate before. It's not a new topic as such. Why do we do it? Also an important question, I believe. It's not simply for the good future in Europe. Europe today has its own problems, challenges, and unfortunately, right now, for the opponents, there are quite a number of arguments that we need to address. Greece, Portugal, Spain, but we see it as a temporary, difficult, though it might be, but a challenge which can and will be overcome through solidarity of European nations who are members of 
EU. What is important for us as well, that this solidarity should encompass Ukraine as well. Difficulties that we face uh, in trade and overall the relationship with our Eastern partner, Eastern partner, Ukraine also has Eastern partner, a major one, is something where this solidarity is important to solve the problems that uh, not only Ukraine but Europe faces as well. And uh, it needs only, not only to be on the advice side, it needs to be practical and uh, significant. We face a major financial challenge right now. For that, we believe the IMF uh, cooperation with IMF should be a major answer. Ukraine needs only a fraction of what IMF is doing to help some of the members of EU today. Fraction, one-tenth, even less so. But it has to take into account realities, both political and economic of today. And I believe EU can do much more in uh, addressing this particular challenge. Not only because we need this, this, uh, this assistance and uh, this solidarity, but we believe that it is in the best interest of EU itself. Other point, what, as I believe, will be happening after signature in Vilnius. Non-signature will be a major something that, as Commissioner Fuller said, we don't really have a plan B. We are working towards success at Vilnius. But we are also considering what we need to do after that. And after that, what we need is making sure that the provisional application will squarely address not only the opportunities, but the inevitable, unfortunately, problems that will be the result of the initial application as such. We see there here the need to have a very proactive dialogue on all levels, with the Commission itself, on sectoral levels, but also with parliaments or between the parliaments, Ukrainian one and European on these particular challenges. And clearly, all this success that we expect to happen in Vilnius and afterwards is uh, difficult to imagine without support of society in large. And from that perspective, civil society, these uh, organizations, non-governmental and others, journalists will play a major role in creating the kind of support in society which will be needed at every juncture as we move forward towards the goal of association. And uh, I will not shy away from something I believe in. In the end, we will have to face the, the question, what is the future for Ukraine? And the future of Ukraine is not association. It is membership. And it has to be addressed after Vilnius. We have not been able to do so before. And we will concentrate on practicalities today. But I will not be fully sincere with you if I would not mention that for Ukraine, consolidation for its mobilization for profound changes in the society, for reforms, this particular goal needs to be enshrined in something more visible and tangible. It would be helpful to everyone, and I do hope that, if not in the immediate future, but in the foreseeable future, we'll get this signal. Again, today we concentrate on association, 
but we see the goal further, something which would help us mobilize the society and work together. And lastly, uh, as uh, the moderator has stated, I was twice foreign minister, now I am dealing with so-called humanitarian bloc. Education, healthcare, innovation, culture, youth policy, and sports. And now I understand that it's only 10% diplomacy in as far as European integration is concerned. 90% needs to be done through concerted effort of all the players and actors and stakeholders inside Ukraine itself. That is the understanding not only of myself, but the whole of government. And we will be working diligently to achieve the goal which is before us, signing agreement in Vilnius and moving forward towards something even more important and uh, more challenging. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, now we move into Vladislav Kaskiv. Uh, your, uh, first of all, uh, let me congratulate with this event which you are co-organizing here in the European Parliament, which is a which is a good for Ukrainian governmental agency. It's not, not very usual business, uh, so congratulations. But uh, he, uh, then, you, uh, if we consider the name, the title of your agency, uh, maybe you may feel yourself in a bit risky position, because investment climate is something which uh, foreign investors usually complain when they speak about Ukraine. So your message probably should be about how Ukrainian government and your particular agency is dealing and working in order to change the perception of, our, of Ukraine uh, in more friendly way to how we can prove, how you can prove that something in, is changing in Ukraine and there are some new opportunities which are open for foreign investor investment and in particular European investors and their investment will be protected in proper way and how association agreement in your opinion maybe will contribute to this overall process. Thank you. Vladislav floor is yours. Thank you very much Alexander. Thank you for this unique possibility to speak Ukrainian in the European Parliament building so please use your headphones. Uh, <clears throat> Sasha, I have answers to your questions, but listening to today's presenters, I would like to share some of my emotions. First and foremost, why we are here today. To be frank, of course one can look for formal reasons, but we were looking for reasons how we can make our contribution into this very important matter of Euro integration of Ukraine. And I'd like to thank our colleagues, partners and friends from the Polish Ukrainian Journalistic Club because the first thing that I feel is the emotions of our Ukrainian journalists who are in this in this meeting room, who for the first time feel not like they are guests, but like at, but like they are at home. They are at the beginning of the European process here, and I'm very happy about it. Today, indeed, is a very special day for Ukraine that sets in motion the whole chain of events that is supposed to lead us to the most important result and event over the whole time frame of Ukrainian independence, and I mean the association agreement and its signature, we are expecting the first thing, and that is the report submitted by Klesniewski Cox, and that we hope that report would be very favorable for Ukraine, because this agreement indeed is a very important formal document, perhaps somebody would be surprised, but this is the first time that the European Union signed such an important, big, voluminous agreement, more than 1,000 pages, and I think that encompasses the seriousness of 
intentions and strategy and strategic importance that EU ascribes, assigns to the relations with Ukraine and other nations in general. I'd like to position that in this manner, especially we've been working with our Polish friends who've contributed a lot into this. I'd like to use this opportunity to thank our friends and colleagues from the European Parliament and the Vice President of the European Parliament, first and foremost, and Mr. Protasevich. For the, I'd like to thank him for the opp opportunity to organize this and for Konstantin Ivanovich, who can very simply explain the richness and the specificities of intentions of the Ukrainian establishment and these Ukrainian citizens. We gathered here to speak in favor of those advantages that Ukraine will derive from the European integration with numbers, to illustrate with numbers and facts. A lot can be said, but we do not need a lot of comments because we are choosing between two markets, 2 trillion euros and 15 trillion euros. I think the answer, which one we should choose, is obvious. We don't need any more numbers to prove that. We hear criticism who say that it will cost 165 billion euros for Ukraine in the next 10 years, I mean the euro integration, but these critics forget that these are the funds that will be invested into Ukraine to create new jobs and to further the economic development, social matters. My mom worked in Greece for 10 years when the transition hard times were upon us. Why did she work there? Because times were hard, economic times were hard after the collapse of the Soviet Union, I mean in Ukraine. And about 4 million Ukrainians work in Ukraine these days according to various assessment and I think they contribute to our common European economy but then my mom came back not only with the money that she earned there several hundreds euros but she most importantly came back with a different mentality different knowledge she came back a different person I'm very happy it happened and I think millions and millions of Ukraine feel the same these days therefore the Euro integration for Ukraine and the association about association agreement and the free trade agreement for Ukraine is first and foremost a civilization choice. This is a an objective number one. Choosing the Western type of civilization. Secondly, it's a matter of our sovereignty and security. Alternative the alternative being losing security and sovereignty. War has been declared on Ukraine and other European countries with regard to the European Association. And that provided the answer not only to the Ukrainian politicians, but also to Ukrainian citizens, whether the European integration and the European direction is right or not. And most importantly, for the first time in 20 years of independence, It provided an answer, and for me, working in a variety of positions in the independent Ukraine, I think for the first time, a colossal feeling of national consolidation is taking place. It gives us a chance to look at possibilities and opportunities that the country that a country may face and achieve when there is a consolidation of forces occurring. I'm afraid and I, I'm afraid and I think afterwards after this signature there will be a confrontation between political forces but that's normal that's okay but I think the most important thing is that if we face a critical moment a critical period of time for Ukraine our consolidation will come back of these political forces I mean because that will give us more prosperity, better times. And the third meaning, only third meaning of this, as far as the European integration is concerned, I mean the investment, the strategic importance. So that's the third moment. I'd like to say, in practical terms, after politicians done, are done doing their job, 
economic development agencies and ministers of the government who deal with investments will have their job cut out for them. We'll have, they'll ha we'll have to use the opportunities that the European integration will open up for us. The unique geoeconomic conditions that Ukraine has should be taken advantage of. I think Ukraine may become a new East European, a, a new East European tiger where production can be moved to. Working as head of our investment agency, I can give you a paradoxical news. A lot of European companies that work in the European market, they are looking for an opportunity to move their production facilities to Ukraine because that would be a new expansion opportunity. So therefore, our priority is a liberalization of our economy, the simplification of rules and procedures, and creation of investment areas, industrial parks that would provide us with the opportunity to develop industries that would be oriented towards the European market. Okay, energy, energy, and energy once again. Why? Because it provides Ukraine with independence and gives Ukraine an opportunity to use is its advantages. I mean, Ukraine has unique capabilities and capacities in terms of gas storage facilities and transportation. So it's known that Ukraine will become not only an integral part of the U European energy market, but will become a unique opportunity to store, transport and use those energy advantages for the European Union. And at the end of the day, agriculture, it is getting stronger and stronger. It's acquiring new importance and plays a significant role in the food security issue in Europe, and Europe can take advantage of that. This is not a complete list by far. List by far. I don't want to take too much of your time, um, but indeed, this is a unique chance, a unique atmosphere that we are having here. I'd like to thank you for this opportunity once again, to thank you all present here, to thank all our friends, all our partners, from the Polish-Ukrainian Forum of Journalists. And of course, I'd like to use this opportunity to thank specifically all, po all Polish people so that we are reigniting, renewing this Polish-Ukrainian Union that is a, a gaining momentum now. It gives, us new, it gives us new opportunities. It gives us a chance for f n new, next, successful integration steps for Ukraine. I hope together we'll become stronger and together we'll win. Thank you. Thank you, Vladislav. Limited in our time frame for this panel because some of our panelists are uh, supposed to go for uh, the report of uh, the mission of uh, President Kwasniewski and Cox. Therefore, we are really have to be very uh, accurate with in our uh, time uh, time schedule. So I ask the rest of panelists to uh, to consider this option and uh, to look at the watch that we have just about 20 minutes to finish this panel together. And we have three more panelists. So I ask uh, Richard Florek, uh, the person from business, uh, founder of uh, the Fakro uh, company, to speak uh, about his own perspective, what is, uh, what is European business is expecting from the changes which association agreement can bring and which is the experience uh, which you would like to develop or improve or to change in the first coming years. The floor is yours. Good afternoon. I would like to uh, thank you for uh, having invited me to this very important conference. Uh, and uh, what could I tell you? Uh, I will talk about uh, economy and based on statistical data from Poland uh, uh, from the last uh, eight years. Uh, 
uh, or more or less since our accession. Uh, the uh, most important indicator is uh, GDP. And here you can see uh, on this chart, this is uh, GDP per capita in Poland uh, in the last 15 years. Uh, these red bars and the red, uh, green line, this is uh, uh, average remuneration, average salary in Poland. Uh, and if you compare these two, this green line with these bars, so you can see the GDP per capita uh, uh, very often uh, is uh, in line with uh, this uh, average salary. So this is this indicator of prosperity in a given country. And we have uh, 2004. Uh, so this is the date of our accession. Uh, I don't know if you can see uh, this year indicated. Can you see this red uh, dot uh, uh, from my pointer? You can see the changes that happened, the growth that we enjoyed, uh, uh, that we w we were enjoying uh, uh, for the last uh, for for the next five years following accession until 2008, uh, and in 2008. Uh, this uh, GDP, this growth uh, uh, stabilized. And next chart, please. Uh, and uh, on this uh, slide, uh, uh, I would like to show you what is uh, GDP per capita uh, in uh, uh, new member states of the European Union uh, in the last five years. Uh, uh, so this is uh, uh, this uh, uh, bar as well as GDP per capita in uh, the uh, uh, richest countries of the European Union in the last five years. Uh, as you can see, uh, the average growth of GDP in uh, uh, the new member states of the European Union, so ranging from Bulgaria, uh, uh, Bul Bulgaria, Romania, Poland, uh, this growth of GDP is only 2%, however, an average growth of uh, GDP in uh, uh, the richest countries of the European Union in the same period uh, is at 9.5%. Uh, so this is the comparison between the richest countries with the new member states, uh, but we have uh, taken into account those countries who have uh, similar population levels to the new member states. And uh, hence the question, why? Uh, uh, following some time, once uh, the reserves uh, are used, uh, uh, we have slowed down. Why? And the distance, this gap is growing between those uh, uh, the richest, uh, the, the, the richest countries in the EU and the new member states who are supposed to catch up, uh, these, con these countries slow down. Uh, in order to understand this phenomenon, I would like to show you something. Uh, and maybe I'll skip this uh, uh, slide. Uh, we do not have uh, sufficient time. And here, I would like to show you uh, the uh, costs uh, structure uh, when it comes to the products that we are purchasing. Uh, uh, for example, uh, a product uh, produced in Poland by uh, foreign investors, Western investors. We have uh, uh, we have energy, we have labor costs, uh, and we also have uh, a different value, uh, corporate uh, costs, corporate values uh, from uh, uh, three to thirty percent in the. Uh, in the in the product uh, uh, price, and this is something that we have to pay uh, because we cannot develop our own uh, we cannot develop our own uh, uh, economy. And this product uh, is produced in Poland, uh, and we consume this product. Uh, so, in this case, uh, uh, we are paying. Uh, this additional uh, tax on poverty, if you like, uh, and this money uh, uh, goes to uh, those richer countries, uh, and hence these differences in the in the in, in development. Uh, uh, but this does not mean that we're against foreign investors. Foreign investors are very important. They are teaching us a lot. Uh, they are supporting our economy. But we cannot forget forget about our domestic companies, about our domestic products. Uh, 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 who uh, uh, can uh, disappear or who can be uh, taken over by Western corporations uh, uh, following accession. And uh, a few facts uh, to uh, finish, uh, just a few facts. Uh, this red bar uh, that you can see, uh, this is the Polish budget uh, 
uh, uh, the Polish national budget uh, and what we have at the very bottom, this very, very uh, low uh, uh, bar, these are uh, EU funds per capita. Uh, so this is just a comparison of how much we are producing uh, and compared to what we are receiving from the European Union. So we are producing we are uh, developing 62% more than EU funds. Of course, these funds, uh, these EU funds are very important, but this is evidence that we have to uh, focus on our economy. We have to develop our domestic market, our domestic uh, companies. Uh, and another interesting comparison, this pink bar that you can see, these are all EU uh, funds, subsidies, that Poland received in 2007-2013, and this uh, blue bar, uh, this uh, this is uh, a potential uh, aggregate of all taxes and uh, uh, monies that go into the Polish budget, uh, uh, which uh, we would have in uh, the Polish budget uh, if uh, so many Poles have not left Poland. Uh, so if these Polish people were able to find uh, uh, work in Poland, uh, uh, their uh, contribution uh, to the Polish budget uh, would be five times larger than all these EU subsidies and EU funds uh, in the period 2007-2013. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, young people, uh, Poles uh, uh, in particular, leave uh, Poland. Uh, uh, there is a lot of unemployment, uh, but uh, a lot of people uh, leave due to this fact. Of course, there are uh, internal and external uh, factors uh, uh, that uh, make people leave. Uh, we are, we, I won't be talking about these internal factors because these are different in Poland and Ukraine, but I will, I will concentrate on these external factors. Uh, what is this? The European Union is uh, uh, structured in a way uh, that uh, uh, Polish uh, companies uh, do not have a lot of uh, competitive uh, advantage, competitive edge. The principles of competing in the European Union uh, ignores the so-called effect of scale. What does it mean? Uh, the larger a scale, uh, the larger, uh, uh, the smaller costs of research distribution uh, costs, uh, as well as service costs, uh, of course. Uh, this, uh, uh, if this effect of scale uh, sometimes uh, reaches uh, 10 or 20 percent of uh, costs. So those companies that uh, reach this effect of scale uh, uh, have seen their uh, costs uh, lowered to a significant extent. So uh, our companies from Poland, from Eastern Europe, are not able to compete on this very re on this uh, well-organized market. Uh, and here you can see the differences between some Polish companies uh, and their Western uh, counterparts. Uh, uh, the Polish lot company, Polish airway uh, uh, airways. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, a turnover much lower than Lufthansa. Uh, for example, the company that produces ice cream, uh, 100 uh, turnover 100 times lower than Nest, Nestle. Uh, Nestle. Uh, of course, and the capital of these uh, operating capital of Polish companies is is much lower. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, this is uh, uh, something uh, that uh, is missing in EU regulation, i.e., this effect of scale. And there is other problems. Uh, for example, in the European Union, uh, uh, there is a lot of talk uh, about uh, the common market. Uh, but this uh, common market uh, from in, in the West is very much uh, is very often closed uh, for products from the East. Uh, in the EU, there is also the uh, a liberalization when it comes to the dominant position, which is beneficial only for Western companies. Uh, to uh, wrap up, I'd like to uh, wish Ukraine uh, good luck. Uh, I wish you a quick uh, and swift uh, association and accession uh, process. Uh, and if you uh, join our family, we'll be able to compete together with uh, a country such as the US, Japan, and other powers from the Far East. But during your negotiations, uh, 
you have to remember uh, to concentrate, to uh, highlight the importance of your domestic uh, companies, your domestic uh, entrepreneurs, uh, uh, so that Ukraine uh, uh, does not uh, become uh, only a colony of the Western Europe. Uh, now to Pavel Kobel, who is a member of European Parliament, but also a chairman of the Cooperation Committee of, Ukra of the European Parliament with Ukrainian Parliament. Please, Pavel, the floor is Thank yours. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. This last part of Mr. President Florek is good as for the beginning. I get the similar um sentence uh, in presence of one of the ambassadors it was a, a, a huge um faux pas uh, but there is a decision of the government of the ukraine already the decision that we are signing and i i know that the decision has already been done before therefore from our side it should be a political declaration that the ukraine should be in the eu eu uh, we know it will last. Uh, we know it's not for tomorrow. Um, however, if we decide uh, to give the Ukraine a good association agreement, um, but the uh, Ukrainian citizens are not given similar rights as we do have as, as the EU citizens, then this policy will be uh, a kind of neo-colonial uh, set to be by the historians in the future. Uh, means we are not based on the same document, uh, historically in, in the same um, place. Uh, we will look at them as the Europeans of the second category that can maybe save some money, uh, maybe um, earn some money, and are, but they cannot uh, dis discute on, the, on the, in similar rights here. And this is the similar uh, kind of, of, of way of stating uh, by the by the vice prime minister Krushenko, and I think as politicians we do have the right and the duty to talk about that. And we are coming to the moment when Ukraine needs to uh, make a decision. Uh, well, um, the Saint Olga, which comes in Khmelnytsky, maybe um, it comes to my mind. Uh, there are some moments in the Ukraine's history. Uh, that we can we we think maybe some some people think maybe it's too much much pathetical, but we need to to say one or the other direction. I I hope and I try that all those uh, things regarding the human rights will be fulfilled, and then there's going to be a signature, and from this point, uh, this is our common matter to succeed. Uh, in my opinion, the most important element is the, the visas. Um, uh, the uh, citizens of Ukraine cannot just uh, make queue on uh, with our embassies and 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 be humiliated. And other uh, our our system is electronic. Uh, we can actually make a lot of things uh, on the border already. So it is not in the European interest is to dupli duplicate this. Um, Therefore, our eligibility is um, whether we will make a non-visa movement between our borders. As I hope, same for Moldovia, Moldova. Uh, the second thing which Mr. Krushchenko is dealing with, it's a, the human and the social uh, matters question. We need to prepare that Ukraine is going to be in the Union someday uh, to prepare good stuff. That's a good point in the, the program of the Jacek Protasiewicz party, uh, the Collegium for the uh, Eastern Partnership. Uh, so it's a high uh, quality uh, academy that will prepare the staff in uh, that in 15, 20 years, they're going to take part in this European legal, uh, legal uh, processes. And then the University of the Eastern Partnership, the big, the big university, um thing that when the group of of eastern uh, uh, our eastern uh, partners uh to come uh, along to sleep the same place to play football and to learn the same code and then in it's in the right direction uh the erasmus program uh when the f and the third question is the temporary 
uh, association agreement application uh, that the Ukrainians can feel as much as possible and as fast as possible. Remem let's remember that the, the, the policy ha happens very, very fast. The Ukrainians must feel it as God says, that they haven't been cheated on, uh, that, that they shouldn't have been overcome by the propaganda of the oppositionists of the uh, European integration. There are lots of it, uh, not only in Ukraine, but also in the surrounding. So the visas, the preparation of stuff for the future, and, and now, and for now, and the temporary use of the agreement. And this all, these all elements must be done on time. The first effects must be seen in spring already because we have the um, we have the 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 new parliament then uh, being elected but i think that uh, if not the, the the president we will have a new parliament we will have a new commission but before there's going to be a half a year uh, and in 2015 uh, the election on the ukraine and the candidates will also be uh, examined on uh, what, how, how they achieve their success. Yushchenko has promised the non-visa movement, and now Yanukovych is actually um, doing the same thing. And if he's not doing that, he should do. And from our side, should be to fulfill this this promise. Um, there's going to be a, also um, the uh, the meeting with the Cox and Kwasniewski. I have brought here what I wanted to give to Mr. Prime Minister. I will give you, I will show you. It's not uh, when it's not wound. I would like to, the, the Prime Minister Grishenko uh, to wind it up uh, a minute after signing the association treaty because then, then from this part um, it's going to be a time for Ukraine and for European Union uh, to save our reputation and the pro European. Uh, choice of Ukraine. This is for you. Thank you very much. Speaker, uh, Member of European Parliament, Konrad Szymański, Russia. Of course, with my both hands, I understand what Pavel told regarding the political context. I cannot understand actually why in Brussels we can observe not uh, the, the, this hesitation, the polit political hesitation, uh, but it should be a normal consequence of, of signing the, the agreement and we, we need to um, uh, call for it but at this moment, I'm wondering what this membership should uh, constitute for, um, because these changes are, are coming for today, tomorrow, uh, and membership can uh, mean different things. Uh, we will surely not have a one uh, common context of the membership of the, in the European Union in a couple of years. I will come back to that later at the very end of my uh, speech. Uh, the heart of the political process for me is an uh, uh, energy uh, and 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 of course the first years of this uh, stuff that rules in Kiev uh, it's a it's a big uh, step ahead uh, which happened uh, which happened in the Ukrainian energy energy uh, matters um, we have a lot of n n norms that even for uh, EU members are sometimes uh, very hard to implement and Ukraine did that actually we have a dissemination of the uh, of the activity which is not it's, it's quite passive it's it's a rather managerial with dominating with the um, notional role uh, rather the state rule but it's also to give any uh, important issue for uh, making the way of Ukraine to to uh, to common Commonwealth of, of uh, energetic Commonwealth of Europe, I think maybe Ukraine were uh, declaring less less spectacular things to close up uh, their own uh, law to European Union. Um, why the state must have been visible in this operational structural 
in, in, in Ukrainian energy. Actually, the same reasons are as for Poland. Um, they have very uh, big problem to, to make analysis of a hat. And this is a big par paradox, let's say. The changes could easily bring the consequence in practice to monopolize the market as the, of the transfer one, let's say. Maybe the, the, the stakeholding company um, could be uh, the one that would monopolize the market and, and actually uh, that would uh, cut down the competence on the market. Uh, but of, of course, there were a lot of social issues. It was very hard to make a scenario uh, that could not uh, finish with the radical uh, increase of the prices for individual people. Um, that, that's a pro well, problem well known in my country as well, you know, um, because the, to, to build up the, the structure um, in which one of the columns, let's say, was an extensive use uh, of the uh, energy sources. Um, there was like, um, it, it made a kind of the basis for the, for the structure, industrial structure for both countries. The connection, uh, the formal connection uh, uh, to the applications, uh, to, the, to the applied uh, laws, uh, this, is, um, this is not uh, enough, of course. Uh, we must solve uh, the, the ownership matters, but also the responsibility for the modernization of the whole uh, transfer system. And then we need the creative policy of the EU the proactive policy uh, to we, we need to make it we need to uh, let it on um, maybe not in a, in a small scale but we have a very similar choice as, as a strategic one um, the second matter is to use the sources of the uh, of the safe uh, energy safety that is that are available uh, as well as in Poland of course uh, as well as in Ukraine uh, and uh, there are no here in Brussels. There are no such big uh, challenges uh, about the financing this this change. But we need to find a proactive method um, to make the scenario like that uh, that the Ukrainian industry uh, should not be just simply closed as it was in the uh, Middle Europe, but uh, changed in the. Uh, in the more uh, energy efficiency and and uh, the fourth matter here also uh, last but not least is to make the competitiveness uh, sources as well so it's not only from the formal point it's not only from the legal point to note down that, that the market is more or less competitive and um, that's not only formal passive uh, we also need the market uh, with the modernized infrastructure, uh, but we also need to see a new sources. We, we need the competence for the for the prices of the sources, the competitive prices, uh, to to make them lower. Uh, the lower price of energy are connected uh, with the real uh, competitor uh, as for production as well as for the for the transfer. The, this competitor will not appear if Ukraine uh, will not uh, be able to uh, get down with the uh, perspective of the, the Black Sea uh, option. And when it happens, when a scenario happens uh, of the uh, market liberalization uh, without the, the, the social costs of, 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 of increasing the, the bills, uh, to pay to be paid and it will then be much easier to uh, to think about of course uh, I'm coming back to the institutional matter the membership in the EU uh, we will not we are not sure what uh, it will mean it will not be similar to today's form of the membership and this is not a bad perspective let's say that the perspective of loosening a bit or differentiating the kind of, um, of of being in the European Union, it's a chance for countries like Ukraine, uh, because if we um, think about the linear uh, competence increase, like uh, we very often discussed before, then 
we, we could say that the door uh, could either tighten or completely close for any other uh, country trying to access the EU. If we have different forms of functioning, then we have a widening up of the of the door, we have opening the door, and we need to find the solution to give uh, to one country's uh, opportunity to uh, make integration and to the others uh, to have to be in, in, in EU without all the consequence even for the monetary unit. Um, and even if Ukraine suddenly appears to be uh, now in the Union, uh, let's see how much pressure would be put uh, to Ukrainian economy, uh, to with, with the with, with the climate, with the energy. It's it's simply impossible to do. It's it's an uh, unreal scenario, and it's a paradox that with this pragmatic integration scenario, is which is based of the association agreement, based on the Commonwealth of of energy, uh, uh, European uh, Energy Commonwealth. Uh, it will uh, it will be a way for it, it will be a blessing for ukraine if it happens that european uh, union cannot go out of this uh, debt end uh, about the climate and energetic policy policy it's not only the, the matter of of getting the costs uh, that's a matter also of the uh, regulatory uh, uh, regulatory instability uh, in 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 union which is very controversial uh, controversial on on the european uh, matter there is uh, there is also the element that to invest in energy here in the union is is terribly uh, difficult and ukraine has to really invest so they must have their hands uh, not really tied up um and uh, as as i said it's a hysterical paradox that the wider union with a multiple choice of the membership can be a big scenario for Ukraine. Uh, space for just three questions from the audience now. Just только три питання від аудиторії. Потім буде друга панель і можливо далі в кінці ще буде можливість поставити питання. So now we have just three questions. Please indicate your wish to ask a question or give a comment to the to panelists. Just uh, give me a signal if you wish. Ah, I see uh, two persons. Uh, yeah, da. We, a potem we. Proszę nacisnąć przycisk. Please press the button. Is it working? Yeah. Uh, Thank you for the invitation of the conference. My name is Paweł Litzkiewicz and I'm representing Eastbook EU portal about the Eastern Partnership. Actually, I have two questions, but as, as we have only three, then I will choose one. I have a question to Mr. Prime Minister Ryszczenko. As Poland national team of football have in their hands the future of the uh, elimination of Ukraine to the World Cup, in Brazil, and you said that President Yanukovych has the power to mobilize the people on the, in the eastern part of Ukraine towards the European Union. I'm asking, are you playing some big companies, uh, some big PR actions to inform actually the, the, the society in the eastern part of Ukraine about the possibilities of integration of the pluses and minuses about it. Thank you. Well, thank you for your question. I think that today uh, we have uh, a wide spectrum of uh, both politicians, uh, political analysis, those who work in different spheres, who essentially work in unison, explaining what uh, are the positives and why we have chosen European integration. It's a debate where essentially you don't really need major PR companies because it has been on the agenda for a long time. Simply today it's a large alignment of different very authoritative political figures but also leaders of society in general who deliver this message. 
I believe that today there is a lot of interest and uh, major TV outlets provide platforms for this discussion. It is being debated on live TV, in live programs. I don't think that the government will provide an added value with a specific PR company being engaged in it. We simply need to engage in debate which is ongoing in society for which we have a lot of platforms which are totally and fully being used today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ask a lady. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. My name is Evgenia Kuzminko and I'm working for European Parliament. Uh, if it's allowed, I have two questions, because you said three questions and I... Uh, I okay. Uh, then uh, my question is, um, okay, it is understandable that Germany or Poland are interested to sign an association agreement, because for them is uh, the market in Ukraine very important. But could you explain uh, why countries like England or Ireland or Belgium should be interested to sign this agreement. Thank you. Um, my question is actually to uh, everybody. <laughs> I would ask one from Ukraine and one from the EU to answer, at least, to answer this question. Please, uh, Mr. Grishin. Well, I think that uh, Essentially, every country in uh, European Union should be interested because those who have not yet made a stake in Ukraine economy with investment, they are simply lagging behind. So even if they are not yet there prominently, they ought to be there. It's uh, uh, the lack of exposure or may be orientation for the time being to other markets from the purely economic point of view. But even those countries that do not have large economic interaction with Ukraine, they do have connection. Example, Spain has a lot of Ukrainian migrant workers who have been an important factor in their economic growth previously and it will continue to be after the restart of economic growth again. So I don't really see any particular reason why they should be against. Those who are proactive for, their motivation is clear. Why should anybody be against? It's not clear to me at all. But I think that we are moving towards a large consensus on the need to have the agreement signed in Vilnius, and I am convinced it will happen. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Flora. Flora. Yes, the group to take. Just uh, briefly, I would like to add something. In the global economy, uh, there is not uh, only this competition between companies and uh, countries, but we also have the competition between continents. We are uh, witnessing the competition between Europe, uh, US, uh, or the Far East. The larger uh, the European Union market, uh, the better our economy, and then hence this effect of scale and the European uh, economy will be able to compete uh, successfully with uh, the U.S. economy or with the Far East. Uh, so Ukraine uh, is very much uh, important uh, not only for Germany and Poland but for the whole market. More German citizens or in English citizens, um, uh, why they should support this association, association agreement, I would say that if you believe that this uh, regulatory framework, this common market approach, this whole acquis communautaire is, is really worth defending, is, is working, is fine for you. You should do all you can to make it available for all your neighbors. If, it's, if, if you really believe that it's fine, you should share it. That, that's all. And that's the nature of the neighborhood policy I've already declared. Thank you. Uh, so our time is over now. Thank you very much every uh, panelist who took part here and thank you audience and we are switching to the next panel. Thank you. Bardzo dziękuję.
Teraz czas na krótką. Now we will have a switch over here at the table and the second panel will start soon. Kontakt z pana współpracownikami. Pan jest teraz dzisiaj. Tu jest akurat coś jeszcze. Mam tutaj dziękuję bardzo. Dziękuję bardzo. Dziękuję bardzo. Mam tutaj. Nie jestem pewien, bo mam tutaj jedno spotkanie, które może mi to utrudnić. Też nie jest zupełnie oczywiste, ale ja bym zostawił panu może moją wizytówkę. To być może jak się umówili w Warszawie, pan Dziękuję bardzo. Hmm, tak się zastanawiam teraz, bo może dzisiaj wieczorem gdzieś. Hmm. A wieczorem pan po tej kolacji? Ja jestem gdzie? Ja już jestem gdzie? Ja wiem, że po 20.30 praktycznie byłbym wolny. Good evening. Uh, we need to start. We, we are running late already. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, can I ask those who are not interested to, to leave the room, please? Or oh, stay. <laughs> or perhaps stay? Huh? <laughs> Please, that you have to be closer to the microphone. Yeah. Then, then you... Okay, uh, we, we need to start now. Uh, this is the second panel. Uh, hello? No. Does it work? Hello? No, I think I think there's something wrong with the system. No. Is this microphone working? Yes, it, it is. is. Okay. 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 Maybe you can sit here. And we'll, we'll, yeah. Technical problems. So, uh, hello there. Uh, my name is Georgi Gotov. I'm a journalist uh, with Euractiv. Uh, I cover Ukraine uh, from a Brussels perspective, and uh, I write uh, a lot more about Ukraine uh, this year than in any previous uh, period. Uh, from a journalistic perspective, I think 2013 has been the year of, uh, of Ukraine. And uh, uh, I'm Happy and uh, honored to, to chair this uh, panel. Uh, thank you, uh, Pavel Zelewski, for giving me your microphone. And uh, <laughs> uh, 
Thank you, Pavel Zelensky, also for inviting us. Uh, 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 he's constantly supporting us, and uh, we are often here in the European Parliament at uh, his invitation. As a journalist, I can come, but I need to s sit there and ask questions. But when Pavel invites me, then uh, I, speak, uh, I speak from here. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, uh, thank you also, uh, Mikhailo Kuchar, uh, Mikhailo Kuchar uh, there. Uh, he is from the Ukraine Future uh, Foundation. Uh, he is a journalist uh, as well. Uh, he is the chief editor of uh, uh, business publication. Later he will speak and he will introduce uh, himself. Uh, in any case, uh, uh, as Deputy Prime Minister Grishchenko uh, said, there is a need of support from the civil society and uh, from the press, and I think uh, uh, Mikhailo embodies uh, both. Uh, we have an interesting panel because uh, the remaining two panelists are, are diplomats. Uh, so uh, Dirk Schubel uh, there uh, represents uh, the External Action Service of uh, Lady Ashton. Uh, he is uh, head of division for uh, the Eastern Partnership. And uh, Sevalot Shensov uh, uh, next to me uh, represents the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of uh, Ukraine. Uh, he is uh, director of the uh, EU department uh, there. Uh, before that, he was a diplomat representing his country uh, in the Ukrainian mission to, to the EU. Uh, actually, I, uh, I know him from many years, and uh, I should also thank him. Uh, thank you for, for your friendship. Uh, I realize I haven't thanked uh, Mr. Schubert. Uh, he's the only panelist uh, whom I haven't thanked, but maybe you will say something, and then I will be uh, able to, to thank you for your statement. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Zalewski will be the first uh, to speak. I think I, I will need to give you the microphone back, because mine doesn't work. Uh, in any case, uh, let's concentrate on the title of, of, our, of our panel, which is uh, uh, what should we expect after the signature of the association agreement uh, in Vilnius. Uh, Mr. Zalewski, you have the floor, sir. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Georgi, from uh, this uh, kind introduction. I'm very happy that uh, we can meet together with uh, a huge group of uh, Ukrainian Polish uh, uh, journalists, uh, also uh, persons interested in uh, Ukrainian uh, EU affairs here in Brussels. Uh, I think that uh, uh, it is true. Uh, we all concentrate on, uh, uh, on values. Uh, however, uh, in my opinion, much more interesting question is what will be afterwards. And uh, as a matter of fact, I, I'm asking myself, but it is also uh, to, to all of us, following questions. First, what will be the effect uh, of uh, Vilnius uh, I mean, association, signing association agreement for uh, internal uh, Ukrainian politics. Uh, I think that it is a very important question because then uh, we will, and that is uh, my idea uh, and also my intention, we will create a certain logics in Ukraine which uh, uh, maybe today starts to be, uh, to be seen, uh, definitely just before, uh, the closer to the, to the, to the summit, uh, the, the better it will, be, it will be seen. The logic which is based on uh, the political target, which is uh, uh, implementation of provisions of association agreement. So, as a matter of fact, the most important political question, or one of the most important political questions, will be uh, who is able to implement uh, this uh, uh, association agreement uh, in Ukraine, and uh, uh, who can uh, do it uh, uh, the best. Uh, so, uh, the perception of politics uh, will be seen from this angle, so that, that the politicians will be observed, will be evaluated just by their uh, uh, try to implement uh, successfully the, uh, the, 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 the provisions. I believe that it is a very important issue because uh, then it will be the common target, uh, both 
for the government and uh, the opposition, and it will press them to cooperate. And of course, the question is uh, uh, how it will look like. Uh, will the government uh, uh, use uh, uh, its power just to uh, do it uh, just uh, itself, uh, by itself, uh, not cooperating with, uh, uh, with, uh, with the opposition? Whether the government will try to, to show that it is only uh, it or uh, it is only President Yanukovych who is able to, to implement successfully this um, association agreement? Or uh, will it, uh, I mean, the government uh, uh, try to cooperate with, uh, uh, with the opposition? It is a very important question because uh, uh, the right answer for this question will warrant uh, uh, the right uh, uh, implementation. And of course, here I can only advocate just uh, consensus and, uh, and cooperation. And of course, uh, the other question is uh, which way it will uh, work uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, coming uh, presidential elections, so who will uh, take benefits out of it? So that is uh, that is also um, quite uh, quite important question. Uh, then, of course, I, I'm not talking about uh, the uh, economic consequences. Uh, uh, I believe that uh, we will talk about it also tomorrow when uh, we will just. Um, uh, exercise uh, the Polish example. Uh, I, I think that uh, it could be interesting for our Ukrainian colleagues, but just concentrate on politics. Then, of course, uh, uh, there is a question of, uh, uh, of Kremlin uh, policy, because definitely uh, uh, for Kremlin, uh, signing association agreement will not be the end of uh, its uh, 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 pressure on, on Ukraine. Uh, it is very clear that uh, today um, uh, Kremlin uh, sees uh, uh, Ukraine government and Ukraine politics and Ukraine society as determined to sign the association agreement. And uh, I believe that uh, for uh, Kremlin it wouldn't be uh, possible, and Kremlin understands that, it wouldn't be possible uh, to uh, uh, just to convince the Ukrainian government not to sign the agreement. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, there is the next date in this Kremlin's uh, uh, battle. It is 2015. So presidential elections. So definitely um, uh, the, the, the interest of, uh, of President Putin would be just to uh, support this candidate, uh, this candidature, uh, who will, uh, who will uh, uh, concentrate on negative sides of association agreement and who will withdraw Ukraine from uh, association agreement. And there is a question uh, that is very, very visible. So there is a question what uh, Ukrainian policy uh, and politics uh, will, will do, will react. Uh, definitely uh, quick ratification, quick implementation, temporary implementation, what is possible according to European law uh, after Ukrainian association, uh, ratification, will um, uh, create uh, the situation of uh, fait accompli, so that uh, uh, the the, the uh, uh, association agreement will start working, will bring the results, will change the, the, the situation economically and politically, and, uh, uh, and the law will be started uh, 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 implementing. So that is, that is extremely important to do it as soon as possible and not to uh, support this negative scenario. Uh, then, of course, um, there is the other question, and uh, this is the last one. Uh, what will be uh, the position of uh, Ukraine, uh, uh, let's say worldwide even, after signing of this um, agreement? What will, uh, what will uh, 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 where Ukraine will be located vis-à-vis uh, -vis all this very interesting processes we observe today, namely uh, creation of uh, 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 Euro-Asian uh, uh, Union uh, by, by Kremlin, uh, then uh, 
negotiations between the European Union and uh, the US on uh, trade, uh, um, uh, transatlantic trade and investment partnership. Um, uh, also, uh, developments in, uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the Far East, uh, development in, in, in China or in India. So, uh, where Ukraine will be uh, after signing of this association? And in my opinion, it will be on good, uh, uh, on good track. Uh, because uh, uh, being uh, connected, being associated with the EU, who will, in my opinion, uh, sign this uh, agreement uh, with the United States, um, will uh, uh, support uh, development of Ukraine. Uh, you, you, I, I believe that you should understand what TTIP between the US and the EU will be. It will be just the beginning of common transatlantic market, with uh, not only uh, without, without custom uh, tariffs, but mainly, but mainly with the same uh, uh, regulations, with the same standards. So having access to European uh, market in the future uh, of course, it requires also further development between the EU and, and Ukraine. You will get also the, uh, the access to EU, US, uh, uh, US market. Then we can, we can speak about something like common, uh, uh, common uh, uh, economic zone from Los Angeles uh, to Ankara and to Wugansk. Uh, and then from this position, uh, I believe it will be easier for you uh, and it will be easier for us, I mean Europeans, to convince our uh, Russian colleagues not to give up with what uh, once President Putin said, that he would like to have a common economic market from, um, from Lisboa to Vladivostok. Uh, because, uh, as a matter of fact, we need cooperation with Russia. We need uh, uh, close linkages with Russia. But the question is, on which standards we will do it? Whether it will be standards created by the EU uh, and then uh, acquired by Ukraine uh, via, uh, via association agreement, standards shared the same time in the future by the US, huh? or whether it will be standards created by uh, President Putin and his comrades. So these are the questions. Uh, I'm optimist. I believe that for uh, maybe not personally President Putin, but for Russians, it will be very, very profitable to have Ukraine developing uh, on U European uh, standards. It will be very, um, very positive uh, to have uh, um, uh, Ukraine uh, connected to the, uh, to the EU and then in the future to the, to the US because it will also in some way influence Russians. If you succeed, I mean, if Ukraine succeed in implementing, and this is the, the last point, succeed in implementing the association agreement, it will be a very good and positive signal for Russians, because then nobody will believe in what uh, uh, President Putin says today, that Russia is a different civilization, that uh, uh, European standards is not for Russia. Uh, Ukraine and Russia are connected too close to uh, credibly argue that uh, if something is possible in Ukraine, it is not possible in Russia. It will be possible in Russia. That is why I'm crossing my fingers for you, for Ukraine, for Ukrainians, but also for Russians. Thank you. Well, let's cross our fingers. Uh, however, uh, my impression is that uh, for, for Russians, this is very much a zero-sum game. Uh, I, I spoke recently to the Russian ambassador to the European Union, uh, Mr. Chizhov, and uh, he said that uh, it was like a three-game uh, match. Uh, he saw the first game with, uh, ended with the initialing of uh, the association agreement. Second game uh, will end with the si signing, but he said maybe there will be no ratifying. Maybe a different parliament in Ukraine will not ratify. In any case, uh, thank you for, for, be, uh, for being uh, uh, forward-looking. And uh, uh, my next speaker uh, is uh, Dirk Schubel.
please be uh, forward looking as well. Uh, my, my previous experience uh, shows me that diplomats prefer to speak about the present day. They say the future is hypothetic. Please try to be hypothetic. Thank you very much. <coughs> um, good afternoon. Um, when I started my new job as head of the vision for the Eastern Partnership countries on the 1st of September, so one and a half months ago, the first word I heard, I think, was Vilnius. And I have heard it since I don't know how many times. It's become kind of a mantra uh, in, uh, in the external action service, in, at least in the area that we are dealing with. And therefore, I'm very pleased that the, today's panel is also looking a little bit beyond, uh, beyond Vilnius, even though, as you rightly say, as a diplomat, uh, perhaps I cannot speculate too much as others, as journalists, can, can do. I'm very happy also to be back on the Ukraine file. I was myself in uh, the delegation in Ukraine from 2006 to 2009, enjoyed a very good time, and four years later I see many things have changed, but some things have not changed. Um, indeed, I wanted to start, in fact, with uh, a few words on the state of play today before we come to the, to the future. Um, Commissioner Fühl has just returned from Kiev, as you might know. He was um, last week in, in Kiev, and he came back actually with uh, mainly positive impressions. We have, um, <clears throat> I think we are on a good track for Vilnius in order to achieve the objective to sign the association agreement there. Uh, many things have, uh, have moved. We have seen positive developments uh, on, some, on a number of the benchmarks that we have fixed in the, in the Council conclusions of the Foreign Affairs Council in December 2012. Uh, we have seen uh, a positive assessment, assessment by the Venice Commission on the uh, uh, prosecution law uh, with a very few small things to be done. And uh, the election law is also on good track. We hope now that both uh, pieces of legislation can still be adopted before, before Vilnius by the RADA. And, of course, we also would like to see a declaration on the application of this parliamentary election legislation to local and to presidential elections, too. On the financial side, uh, some small work needs to be done as well on the business climate, with, which, as you know, is also part of the benchmarks. Um, public finance management strategy uh, is, is still on the agenda also to launch our budget support operations again. And obviously we would like to see uh, an agreement with the IMF also in order to launch our, um, uh, our MFA um, uh, in combination to, the, to a new agree agreement with the, with the IMF. So um, as the uh, Council conclusions from December 2012 said, determined action and tangible progress on the, implementation, on the implementation of the benchmarks. We have moved quite a bit uh, ahead, but uh, a little piece of work is still to be done in order to be sure that we can uh, sign the association agreement in Vilnius. And the, la the last but certainly not the least point is, of course, uh, um, uh, selective justice and the case of Yulia Timoshenko. Uh, at this moment in time, or in a few minutes, uh, there will be a press conference by both ex-presidents Krasnevsky and Cox, and we hope, of course, that we will have news uh, on, on this subject also already at this, at this press conference. Um, that leads me to our next meetings, which is the Foreign Affairs Council of the, on the 21st of October, where Ukraine will certainly be discussed, but uh, as you know, um, uh, there will be no final decision yet uh, by the EU on uh, whether or not we will sign the agreement or there's agreement by all member states to sign the association agreement on the 29th of November. It will have to wait until the 18th of November, which is the next Foreign Affairs Council. So until then, all the open issues should be resolved, and we hope that this will be the case. Now, um, under the assumption that we will sign in, uh, in Vilnius uh, on the 29th uh, of November, I think uh, a few things were already mentioned, by, um, which I fully share, by Mr. Zalewski. Uh, I also believe that if you sign the um, uh, association agreement, this will not only strengthen, it will cement the democratic processes in, uh, in Ukraine. It will um, also increase the self-confidence, I believe, of the, Moldo of the uh, Ukrainian population. Um, and uh, it will help indeed to, that the opposition and the government maybe find each other or get closer together. Uh, by the way, this has already happened in the last few months. I noticed with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, very, um, with interest that indeed the European factor has uh, over the last few weeks and months uh, made, uh, got get closer the opposition and the, and the um, uh, Ukrainian government, which I think is an, is a, is an excellent news. Um, economic uh, issues I know you will discuss tomorrow, but I think we have seen several studies even uh, in, uh, announcing a one-off effect of between 6 and 8 percent of GDP 
through the um, uh, uh, um, uh, association agreement, including the D DCFTA. Obviously, many effects will only be visible uh, at a later stage, not on day one. Uh, therefore, it is all the more important that we get very quickly uh, through all the uh, legal procedures. And I wanted to say one word on this uh, as a good bureaucrat uh, that you see what the, where we are. So if we sign in, in Vilnius, then obviously the Council will present uh, the documents to the uh, European Parliament, which hopefully will apply a fast-track procedure in order to uh, uh, prove the, give its consent to the, to the association agreement, and we hope that this can happen in the, in the spring, uh, in, in a few months' time. Uh, at the same time, Ukraine will have to ratify the agreement um, and in order to have it provisionally applied, and we understand that, uh, but Mr. Chensov can correct me if I'm wrong, that the procedure will take two to three months to, to do so. So um, um, the provisional application could then start after all the documents of ratification have been presented um, uh, to the Council um, um, sometime in the early summer, and with a little bit of luck, and that's the optimistic scenario, the provisional application could happen indeed in the, in the summer, uh, could start in the summer of, um, of 2014. Um, <clears throat> Then, of course, the ratification, ratification procedures will continue in the, among the member states, which will, is difficult to predict how long it will take, but obviously we hope that this will be a very uh, fast-track procedure. Now, um, some people think, uh, indeed, as I said in the beginning, that Vilnius is the end of, of, the, of the story, but in fact it's just the beginning, because the real work will indeed only start. Up to now we have negotiated and negotiated, and as of then the implementation will start. It is obvious that um, uh, if we see what we will do uh, in order to properly monitor the association agreement, that we will, first of all, will refer, of course, to the instruments that the agreement provides for. So these instruments are very similar to the ones that exist under the cooperation, uh, under the existing uh, partnership and cooperation agreement. There will be an association council, there will be an association mm -hmm. committee. Obviously, this will, this will be a, a proper monitoring body. We have also the so-called association agendas, which we just have adapted in, uh, in June uh, this year, if I'm not mistaken. And Obviously, we will have to look whether the association agenda is up to date, and obviously this can be a perfect tool also to uh, jointly implement properly the, the agreement. And, of course, uh, talking about the benchmarks, uh, we will obviously see to it that uh, uh, the issues that we have mentioned there, uh, meaning adoption of, of laws, uh, is, of course, also not the end. It's also we would like to see them properly implemented uh, as, for instance, the election law in the upcoming uh, presidential elections in 2015 and to, in all other uh, elections that are uh, to be followed in the near, in the near future in, in Ukraine. Um, uh, I think one uh, issue that was mentioned in your trailer um, that I saw is also a uh, visa-free regime, visa facilitation, visa, uh, visa-free regime, visa dialogue. Um, uh, I come, I was, I spent the last four years in Moldova as head of delegation, and uh, perhaps this might be a very good example how uh, this can be done in a, very quickly, because uh, Moldova has, is uh, on the exact, on the visa dialogue further advanced than, than Ukraine, but I hope that Ukraine can catch up uh, as well and move quickly to the so-called second phase of this uh, visa liberalization action plan. Um, there, for your information, there was a, a senior officials meeting with our director general of DG Home on the 27th of September, and now we are awaiting the uh, next progress report from the Ukrainian side. If it hasn't uh, pre been presented yet, but it is, I think, uh, due soon. Um, and we hope that uh, we can come also to a positive assessment in this report so that uh, a move to the second phase, uh, which is the implementation phase, in fact, can take place so that we can uh, perhaps uh, in not too far a future also envisage a visa-free regime when all conditions are fulfilled. Uh, one of the major conditions for this is still a, a piece of anti-discrimination legislation, just to mention one of the issues. And again, perhaps uh, Moldova can serve as an example because even there the circumstances were not easy, but it was possible to pass this, it, it was made possible to pass this law, and uh, perhaps this is also possible in, 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 U, in Ukraine. Um, so in general terms, I think uh, we are all very optimistic that we will sign in Vilnius. There is no guarantee yet. I have to repeat this. And after that, I think uh, we are um, at this moment preparing for the steps to come. And I think uh, by the time of Vilnius, we will know exactly, and we will have discussed also with our Ukrainian colleagues, how exactly the implementation of the agreement can 
move, move ahead full steam so that we can really enjoy the advantages, both sides, by the way, also the EU side of the association agreement and the deep and comprehensive free trade area. I will stop here, but obviously I will be happy to reply to your questions. Thank you, uh, Dr. Schubel. Uh, what is very convenient when two diplomats speak uh, one after the other is that you can figure out the differences if there are any, and I was, I was watching, uh, you know, Dirk looking at uh, Sevolod uh, from time to time uh, to get confirmation for, for what he, he said. So, um, yes, there are very interesting and important issues in terms of uh, the timing for the ratification of, of the signature. And uh, let's, let's, let's hear now the perspective from Sevolod Chensov. Uh, thank you. Georgi, it's a really pleasure to be here. Uh, uh, you're active, uh, definitely. I've been uh, very active, sorry for this, tautology <laughs> on the Eastern Front, how, how to say. And uh, uh, you, you have a special, uh, uh, special chapter, uh, Europe East, which uh, is getting uh, uh, more, uh, more and more, uh, how to say, informative and uh, uh, which use the source of uh, for, 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 the, for the many medias in, in the uh, region uh, on European politics and also on EU politics uh, towards the, uh, the uh, uh, neighboring countries. Uh, uh, many thanks also to, to, to uh, all friend of Ukraine, Pavel, Pavel Zalewski, for. for co-sponsoring this event and uh, for Ukraine's Future Foundation. Uh, indeed, uh, it's, it's never boring to, to, to work on uh, EU issues, uh, and uh, we, uh, we, have, we have to shoot uh, the, the moving target, uh, because the EU is changing, uh, Ukraine is changing, and we have to adopt our uh, agenda to, to, to that uh, ever-changing uh, uh, landscape. We started, uh, when we started negotiations, one of the main uh, uh, target was to get the membership perspective. And as Mr. Szymanski today pointed it, that uh, it's not excluded that it's to, to the benefit of Ukraine that there is not there. We can argue this point, but uh, my, uh, my message is that we really need to be sober and re result-oriented in uh, our uh, uh, in dealing with the uh, with the EU. So we have we have to understand what uh, the, uh, what kind of period the European Union is living through. At the same time, uh, we uh, we we need the same kind of uh, sensibility. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the friendly approach from our EU colleagues. Uh, then we have win-win situation and we have comfortable <coughs> uh, arrangements for our future cooperation. Uh, I will not uh, repeat uh, may, uh, what was said during the first panel and definitely I, I, uh, I, I only can agree with uh, uh, with Dirk uh, that uh, this very intensive agenda which was set by the December uh, 2012 uh, Council meeting and was in a way un 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 uh, endorsed by the Ukraine summit in February uh, stimulated uh, the reforms in Ukraine and what is more important <coughs> created a uh, very unique uh, reformative uh, mood in the, in the parliament and in, in the society as a whole. Uh, in the situation that there is a very, very lipid, uh, little appetite for reforms in Europe and, and globally. So we, we, we have to appreciate uh, that there is a really unique situation. What was uh, the, the uh, reform agenda or con conditionalities to sign the agreement, uh, they definitely uh, mirror what is fixed in the agreement itself. So in a way, we already started implementation of the agreement. 
while preparing to, to, to the signing. So uh, our understanding is that we need uh, to uh, use this momentum to keep this pace uh, and only uh, to further develop the existing uh, uh, dynamics in the internal politics after the signing of the agreement. I hate to speculate how, uh, how long it will take to ratify the, uh, the agreement. Definitely it depends uh, on the political will in the parliament. Also, uh, there is a technical job to be done because the agreement is very complex and it needs a great deal of uh, par parliamentary kind of scrutiny and expertise. But generally, yes, you, you, you're right, it's uh, up to several months. Uh, and also, we, uh, as, uh, as soon as the agreement will be ratified by the Ukrainian parliament and necessary instruments, will be deposit, uh, deposited with, with, with the Council, uh, it, it will get partially op uh, operational, at least the free trade zone and, and several uh, other uh, articles and chapters will enter into force. And we need to get prepared for that preliminary uh, application of the agreement. What we are doing to, to get prepared, uh, we uh, we are working on the program of implementation of the agreement together with, the, uh, with our colleagues from the European External Action Service and the European Commission. Uh, we count that uh, the separate uh, technical assistance uh, uh, vehicle will be uh, financed by, by, by our EU colleagues, and it, it will focus on uh, institutional building uh, in, in Ukraine, uh, also on uh, creation of uh, uh, necessary uh, electronic databases. It also, we count, it would help us uh, to stage a uh, necessary public campaign. And I mean, by public campaign, I, I, I don't mean just informing the public what is the agreement, uh, but in real time to get people and different constituencies and actors to get them informed how agreement is implemented and what are the real benefits uh, the businesses and uh, civil society and other actors could get from the implementation of the agreement. So we see it as, as a common endeavor. Uh, this is, uh, those are internal uh, challenges uh, we, which we are going to face together. Uh, here, we, we, the Russian factor was already mentioned. Uh, definitely, uh, we, need, uh, we, we have to acknowledge that the Russian Federation could have legitimate uh, uh, concerns in, uh, connected to the uh, future implementation of the agreement. Uh, I, I will not dwell here on the political concerns. And we, we, we have to work together with the European Union, with Russian Federation, to, uh, to help uh, the Russians to digest the, uh, the new reality. Uh, we have uh, different formats. We, we have our bilateral formats with, with Russians. EU has uh, a partnership for modernization, which has relevant uh, trade uh, uh, format. We can also go trilateral, but which is not we, we, which is not the principal point. The principal point is that we that we have to establish positive uh, agenda uh, with Russian Federation with regard to the agreement implementation and. On, within the broader uh, framework on the Eastern Partnership as such. Uh, and the main things, uh, the main issues to be discussed is, already mentioned here, uh, regulatory approximation of the standards. And uh, it, it, it was said that, uh, uh, Paul Zaleski mentioned that uh, the, Russia should accept, uh, as I understood, Russia should accept EU standards 
Well, we, we, we need also to be flexible. If the Russian standards are uh, uh, compatible in certain areas, there could be mutual recognition. The same true for Americans. So if, we, if Ukraine or Russia need to upgrade its standards, yes, we can go this way or mutually recognize them. So <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is the issue we, we need to, to tackle in the nearest future. Uh, to avoid uh, this as unnecessary confrontation. We, we are going as an incoming presidency in the uh, Commonwealth of Independent States to use the existing tools and uh, not, not to, uh, to get into the situation that uh, existing free trade arrangement with the uh, CIS uh, will be torpedoed because of the political will of uh, our Russian friends, we, we, we have to really concentrate on uh, existing mechanism, how, uh, how to accommodate their concerns, and if necessary, to create the, the mechanism how the interested parties, including Russians, could defend them legitimately, could defend their market. At the same time, Ukraine should be prepared to defend its own interests in using uh, WTO tools and other uh, existing forests. So I will stop here and uh, looking forward for your questions. Thank you. Thank you. You, you, you said uh, we need to help Russians uh, digest uh, reality. I think uh, this is what we need to do. And uh, uh, thank you uh, so a lot for your kind uh, words to me and uh, to, to your active. After the diplomats, uh, we can now have uh, the perspective of uh, civil society and uh, the press, actually. Uh, I give now the floor to Mikhailo Kuhar, uh, representing the Ukraine, uh, the future, uh, Ukraine's Future Foundation, uh, which uh, actually helps uh, your active uh, better cover uh, Ukraine. I understand, uh, uh, Mikhailo, that you will speak uh, Ukrainian. You, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I see I got just a three minutes. I will be continuing Ukrainian. It will be faster. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, I just wanted more than I actually would be able to now because we are limited in time. When I was coming here, I thought. I would be the only Eurosceptic here in this panel, but after Mr. Culver's presentation, I see that I am not the only one, and I'm glad that I heard these opinions that were voiced today. I'd like to remind you that Mr. Culver warned us to be careful in building out the relationships with the EU and to be careful about the association. He told me that those countries that lost their monetary sovereignty are not doing well. But he didn't say that directly, but he, he mentioned Greece that we all know about. We have lots of universities in Ukraine. We have lots of economists in Ukraine who are following the European Union situation. And both you and we see and realize that Greece could simply extinguish the crisis by devaluating its currency, but it's increasing its debts for four years now, and it's very dangerous. Ukraine, when we're talking about what's going to happen after Vilnius, about the future, we see now not only the benefits that stem from the cooperation with the EU, but also see the risks that stem from that. Speaking about the Ukrainian situation, I'd like to say that Perhaps you know about the science of sociology and sociology in Ukraine. Sixty percent of Ukrainians support Ukrainian integration into, EU, into the EU. Forty percent seem to support a closer cooperation with Russia. People are not asking the question whether they want to be back in the USSR. They are just saying they're a, for, they stand for a closer cooperation with Russia. And I believe that if Ukraine hears all the messages that were voiced today and that are 
prevalent in Ukraine, then we'll find our own unique model of working, cooperating with the EU that will be beneficial for the EU, both for the EU and Ukraine. I personally do not support Ukrainian membership in the EU. I believe that my country would gain maximum benefits having a free trade agreement and a visa-free agreement. I'm absolutely convinced that the European Union, if it reviewed its desire to politically absorb Ukraine, then it would realize that under these circumstances the EU would actually get and see more benefits. The Ukrainian sociological science asks itself a question. Those 40 percent who are not allegedly in favor of the EU, would they agree with the free trade agreement with the EU and the visa-free agreement, they are in favour of it, of course. 100% almost in my country support that. I don't want anybody to pursue me as a proponent of the integration of Ukraine with Russia, because the Union, the processes that are building, are built, being built in the East Hundreds and millions of euros are being spent to set up a third system of standards, a, a third system of certification that is not needed by anybody in the world. We're, try, we're, we're being drawn or they're trying to draw us into this and there's nothing there to discuss. I mean, there's no benefit in that. But I just want to stay within the time frame. Two last things. I'm an economist and we would talk about the cooperation of Ukraine with the EU. I'd like to say that we've got we had to mention two huge benefits. First, Ukraine is a country that is that's got three powerful nuclear power stations close to the EU that has thirty percent profit margin that generate thirty percent profit margin. If we build the infrastructure really well I mean our work with the EU. Perhaps Ukraine could become an, a power gas prom for Europe. Ukraine has powerful gas storage facilities. They are all bordering the EU. Ukraine has now, without being a member of the association, Ukraine joined a, the third energy charter package and Ukraine is a matter of fact part of the European energy community and Ukraine can be useful for the European Union. German, Polish, Austrian gas traders and companies benefit from increasing the market, their market share by using 30 billion cubic meters storage facilities in Ukraine. I'm convinced that the association agreement that will be signed, even though I don't agree with all of it, will benefit us a lot. But I do hope that after Vilnius, Ukraine will become one of the first countries that will find its own pragmatic format that it would use to build with the EU without being a full member. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, uh, Michal, also for uh, trying to be uh, very brief. Uh, uh, what, what I can uh, answer to you in, uh, um, in short is uh, uh, don't repeat the mistakes uh, my country, Bulgaria, has made. Don't uh, haste to say yes to everything uh, Brussels may, may tell you, and same advice to, to several of course. Uh, I, I realize that we are competing uh, with the announcement of uh, the results from the Cox Kwasniewski report and uh, uh, in spite of that we have a full room. I, I see this as a big success of this panel. Uh, I, I will do as, as the previous uh, panel did, uh, inviting for uh, only uh, three questions. So uh, let me see your hands. You have the floor, madam. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Lilia Pivovar. I'm a student for international relationships. And um, probably my question is going to be uh, an inconvenient one because I'm basing it on Yulia Timoshenko's case. And um, 
um, and the position of the European Union that by now has been very firm and is calling for her release. And there were, was actually said a lot of times that without the solution to this problem, there will be no signing. And um, as we know, there, has no, there hasn't been any solution, public solution, applied uh, by now. And um, actually moving to the question is, is the European Union ready to cancel the um, uh, signing, uh, the Vilnius summit, if uh, there will be no solutions? Thank you. Um, you want to give me a scoop? Uh, as a journalist, I would love to write a story the European Union Council Summit, but uh, I don't think this will be the case. I think uh, uh, Dirk is better placed uh, uh, for uh, answering to this question. Um, yes, uh, I hope so. <laughs> well, the answer is, is very short. We are not ready to give up on this uh, requirement. Uh, and the Ukrainian government, Ukrainian leadership knows this very well, that uh, a solution to the Yulia Timoshenko case has to be identified well in advance of the Vilnius summit, meaning not on the last day. And uh, we are working jointly on finding this solution. And maybe the report of Mr. Cox and Mr. Kwasniewski, which is in peril almost taking place, will already outline a way into this direction. That's what we all hope. But at the latest, before the, well before the Vilnius summit, such solution will have to be found. Otherwise, we will not sign the association agreement. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. I just, just would like to make a point about it, because uh, uh, as a matter of fact, signing association agreement and uh, with all the consequences in Ukraine, uh, also for Ukrainian-Russian relations, increases leverage which the EU has on Ukraine, on Ukrainian government. And it is very clear. Uh, Ukraine needs European Union support in negotiations with IMF to uh, finance uh, Ukrainian reforms. And this list is longer. Uh, it means that signing association agreement creates the logics within which Madame Timoshenko will be free. And that is something I'm absolutely sure. Uh, the, better, the quicker it happens, the better. Okay. We need to finish in one minute uh, because I'm told that uh, this room is needed for another meeting. I, I don't think we have uh, the time for a question and answer. Uh, I would like just to, to, to thank uh, the panelists and uh, thank all of you uh, for being uh, present here. And... Uh, 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 I hope that you will uh, uh, continue to follow the developments and uh, personally uh, I'm, I'm hasting to see what are the results uh, from the Cox Kwasniewski uh, report. See you soon. Bye-bye.